This is my $400 laptop. It's just like any other gaming laptop with the i7 8750H, RTX 2060 mobile, 16 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. I've often found myself having to optimize Windows with every new PC or laptop I get, and recently I found a way to condense all those optimizations into one step. That being said, today's topic is Atlas Windows, and we'll be seeing if it's worth the switch. If you want to see what this crucial kit of RAM can do in this laptop, drop a like as I'll be showing the importance of dual channel memory in my next video as the laptop comes to life and blows today's performance numbers out of the water. Anyways, back to the video. Before installing Atlas Windows, I'd like to mention that there will be some features missing that are otherwise present in the default Windows 10. These features listed right here are all the features that will not be present in Atlas Windows, and it's all mentioned in their documentation on their website. However, in version 3.0 of Atlas Windows, some of these features will be given as options, so you can opt in to keep the features you want and disable the features you don't want. I would wait for version 3.0 of Atlas Windows if you're worried about security, as my current install of Atlas Windows doesn't have Windows Defender. Alternatively, you could have two boot drives in your PC, one with Atlas Windows and one with default Windows 10, which I'll be doing in the future. Thus, I'll be able to have the benefits of Atlas Windows with none of the drawbacks, as I can lean back to the default install of Windows 10 whenever I need to. Since I'm installing this on my laptop, and I'm just looking to extract the most performance I can, so I'll only be installing Atlas Windows. That being said, to see the difference between using Atlas Windows and just normal Windows, I set up to find a benchmark that anybody can do to see the results relatively quickly. This test is known as user benchmark and tests everything to your CPU, GPU, RAM, storage, and even latency. The results are then given to you with a provided unique link showcasing how your system stacks up in three different categories. Those categories are known as gaming, desktop, and workstation. By the way, while watching this video, you can give the test a try and see how your PC or laptop stacks up against my laptop right here. To do the test, head to the link in the description to download and run the test. While running the test, make sure to close anything that uses your PC's performance so your PC's true performance is being represented. Feel free to post your results in the comment section below as I'm interested in what PCs you guys have and how well they perform. Last I explained what the three categories were and now I'll be explaining exactly what the results from each category mean. The gaming score is self-explanatory as is the performance during gaming. The desktop score is the performance during everyday tasks such as web browsing, watching videos, and typing a Word document. Finally, the workstation score indicates the performance during professional tasks like video editing, 3D modeling, and running simulations of sorts. With these categorized scores at the top, below we see the score and performance on a component basis. This is really useful as it enables us to see if our components are functioning as they should, greater than average, or less than another identical piece of component. So let's see how this laptop stacks up. The first column of scores is default Windows 10, and there the scores to be. In the first test for Atlas Windows, a high CPU utilization was being reported. But regardless of this, we still got an increase of a couple of percentage points. Most notably in gaming, we gained 12% on top of 52%, resulting in an improved score of 64%. In the second Atlas Windows test, without any high CPU utilization, we still gained a couple of percentage points, although being slightly less. In gaming, we still improved by a whole 10% on top of 52%, resulting in an improved score of 62%. Overall, with or without any high CPU utilization, the laptop gained performance regardless. Now when looking at the individual components is where we see what component benefit the most from Atlas Windows. As per usual, the first column is representing default Windows 10, and at first glance, we can already see a tangible improvement. The i7-8750H did 10.5% to 7.2% better using Atlas Windows than when using default Windows 10. For the RTX 2060 Mobile, it did about just the same, but a 1% gain is still a gain nonetheless. The Kingston NVMe SSD tests were inconclusive, but did show a performance increase of 30% in the first test. Finally, the Kingston 16 gigs of RAM did 6.2% to 4.8% better using Atlas Windows than when using default Windows 10. A little less of why the GPU didn't get a substantial gain as a CPU is because Windows 10 is primarily a CPU task to begin with. So when we switched from default Windows 10 for Atlas Windows, we reduced the load on the CPU by cutting it down in both size and number of services. Essentially, Atlas Windows reduced the amount of responsibilities and tasks for the CPU to take up more responsibility slash tasks elsewhere, like in our games, professional tasks like video editing, and save on battery life when idling. Since there's more CPU left, it performs better at those tasks because there's more CPU available to handle that very task. Pretty simple, right? Now, if you're looking for a tip to specifically increase GPU performance, you can look at undervolting, overclocking, or a combination of both, which is best to do. I'll be posting a video on overclocking and undervolting this laptop in an upcoming video, so watch out for that. Previously, I posted an AMD GPU optimization guide not so long ago, so check that out if you're on an AMD GPU. Click on the top right corner right now to watch that video. Moving along, 
To see the impact of Alice Windows in gaming, I tested the game Fortnite and six different scenarios, so that we get an accurate picture of the real world performance improvement. The first few tests will refer to a static test are used to see what is the highest FPS the system can achieve in a control scenario. The next few tests will refer to as dynamic tests are used to see how well the system performs under changing pressure. For all the tests here on out, on the left is default Windows 10, which is the number to beat, and on the right is Alice Windows, which is the number we want to be higher. For stuff is DX11. In a static test, there wasn't much of a difference in FPS across the board, and any gain or loss is with an error, meaning that the difference in FPS wasn't significant enough to indicate a result that is reproducible while consistently suggesting the same losses or gains. Next, in the dynamic tests, we see a slight improvement in the 1% and 0.1% lows, which means that the gameplay will stutter less overall, and the average FPS overall stayed the same across the board, except in gliding with the 11 FPS decrease. Next, we have DX12. In the static test, we see a nice little increase of 10 FPS on average FPS and a nice little 10 to 30 FPS increase on the 1% lows, with the 0.1% lows being relatively the same. In the dynamic test, we see a nice little increase in average FPS going up 7 to 22 FPS. And in the 1% and 0.1% lows, we see performance that is relatively the same across the board in these tests. Now, finally, with performance mode on high meshes. In the static test, we see a little increase on average FPS going up 5 to 10 FPS. And on the 1% and 0.1% lows, going up 5 to 30 FPS or staying the same. In the dynamic test, we see a little to a large increase in average FPS, most notably in gliding, with a 40 FPS increase and a little 10 FPS increase in the other two tests. In the 1% and 0.1% lows, we see a significant increase in FPS for free building, increasing 250% from 40 FPS to 86 FPS. And the rest of the tests, we see a nice increase with some tests remaining with an error. Saving the best for last, we have performance mode with low meshes. In the static test, we have a nice little bump in average FPS across the board with an increase of 6 to 11 FPS. FPS. In the 1% and 0.1% lows, we see an increase in FPS, along with performance, remaining relatively the same. In the dynamic tests, we have a moderate increase in average FPS, going from 10 to 25 FPS. With FPS being well above 144 FPS, we can safely say that this laptop can likely handle 144Hz monitor in-game in most cases. In the 1% and 0.1% lows, we see an increase across the board in FPS going up 2 to 14 FPS. So that sums it up for Atlas Windows. Is it worth it? I think yes, because not only did it help to increase performance, but probably battery life as well, since Windows is not as taxing as it was before. Now, if you're rushing to install Atlas Windows, I would first recommend installing it on a second PC and trying it out for at least a month. If you don't have a second PC, then you can partition your boot drive and install it there. I would also like to point out that if you're planning on partitioning your boot drive, make sure it's at least one terabyte, and I would not recommend partitioning a 500 gig boot drive as you run out of storage real quick. Still, if you plan on getting a second SSD or hard drive anyway, then you can use that instead. If you run into any issues using Atlas Windows, they have a common issues section and a forum of tutorials showing how to solve various issues, which is linked in the description. That'll be it for me, and make sure to like, share, and subscribe as I'm on my way to being a YouTube partner and only need three dozen more hours of watch time. Bye for now, and I'll see you in the next video.